In this video, I will show you how to do this in geometry nodes in the most easy and fast method. So get your cup of tea ready, cause we are rolling. First clean the scene by selecting all and hit X to delete it. Then from the add menu with shift A, add a plane. I will scale it up by two to give us more space to work with. Then hit control A to apply scale once you're done. Switch now to geometry nodes from up top and I will ditch the Informations window on the left to focus on the Viewport and Geometry node sides. To start a new Geometry node on this plane, just select it and hit the New button. What we have now are Input and Output nodes for the Geometry node. So everything you need to add will end up on this line between them. I will start with some subdivision for the plane, hit Shift-A to open the Add menu, and search for the Subdivide Mesh node, then drop it on the green line. At first it looked like it didn't do anything. However, once you switch to wireframe mode, you will see the subdivisions on the plane after you increase the level count on this node. What we need after that is the Instance on Point node. And once you add it on the line, the plane will disappear. To get it back, we need to assign a mesh in the Instance slot, and for this one example, we will go with a mesh cube from the nodes, or you can go with any object you have in the scene by simply dragging it from the layers to the nodes area. The cube node we added as an instance is way too big. To control it, we have two sections. Either use the size values in the cube node, or go with the instance scale. Both do the same here. Those numbers on the cube node are the minimum values, so keep them this way. And now we need another object to work as a force, like the character you see at the intro, so let's go with a simple sphere. Just add it in the scene with Shift A, then scale it to fit if needed, and drag it from the layers section to the nodes as an object info. Put the object info node on relative to make it affect the instances. After that, we will take the object geometry and plug it into another node called Geometry Proximity. It will go into the target slot as shown. Now the thing we need to control this time is the offset value of the instance cubes. And to get that we need a node called Set Position. Drop it after the instance on point node and the proximity distance will go into the offset in the set position. Try moving the sphere around to see if it's affecting the instances. If not, check the object info node and make sure it's on relative. The effect is all over the place. To control it, we need the map range node. Look it up in the search bar and drop it after the proximity. It's settled down a bit, still we need to control those values on the map range. The top two will control the effect radius around the sphere object, while the bottom values will let you switch the effect direction. So the sphere either moving the cubes from its way or make them settle back to their position. Now that would be enough if this node set is going directly to the instance on point. But since we have the set position, we need to add the random value node. Put it at vector type first, then drop it after the map range. You do also need to keep the max values for the last node on zero. And that will work fine, but for some extra controlling, we can add a math node between the random value and the map range. But first, let me increase the subdivision level to four and rescale the cubes to fit. Back to the math node we talked about. Let's add one on multiply then connect it to the max input for the random value node and plug in it the map range result as shown. 
Now this math node along with the map range values should give us full control over the offset of the instances. So you can go now and experiment with the numbers to see what fits your scene and maybe increase the subdivision level count since 4 still kinda low number for the instances. And as I said, the math node is just for extra control so you can drop it if you want to keep it simple. The effect from it is not that huge. Last time we did something similar, and we went directly to the instance scale, which can give you some fun results if you mixed it with the offset we did this time. You can also go with the instance rotation and plug in it either the map range node for a controlled effect or directly from the proximity distance for full scale rotation on those instances. However, since the map range node is free, you can use two of them. So with Shift D, we can copy it to the other line between the proximity distance and the instance rotation. This way we can control the offset and the rotation with different values. And this will be the node tree for everything we did. A really simple set, even if you're a beginner, once you take it one by one. Now, one thing to mention is, if you want to use an empty instead of the sphere or any other mesh, you need to add another node called the mesh line and plug the object info location in it. Then plug the mesh line in the proximity target and put the proximity on points. We did this in the last video. So if you have any issues, get back to it. I will leave it on the end screen. For the intro scene, you can go with the same thing we did and use any character you have instead of the sphere so the character will go into the proximity to the map range, then to the random value, and finally to the offset. Same, same. Nothing different. And that's it. Subscribe if you love your grandpa, and see you guys next time. Stay sharp. Goodbye.